Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, aka the guy who's always hunting for the one like Agent Smith in a Matrix glitch, and the second trailer for the Matrix Resurrections is now here. Throughout this video, we're going to be breaking down what could be happening in the movie, some of the leaks on the film, and also giving our reaction to it. Full spoilers ahead, so if you don't want anything ruined, then I recommend you dodge this video whilst you still can. If you enjoyed Keanu, please drop a thumbs up for the worst puns in the game. That's meant to be Keanu, and with that out of the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into our breakdown of the Matrix Resurrections trailer. Has to be one of the worst, one of the worst puns I've done on this channel. Now, like most second trailers, there's not a whole host of extra stuff in this one, but we do get more things fleshed out as to what's going to be happening. There's also some new characters shown here, and because of this, we can kind of piece together certain things. I think it's become clear at this point that a lot of the leaks for the film are indeed true, and though I don't want to out and out spoil the movie, I am going to be talking about some of them just to give some context to exactly what we see. Now one of the main things that people are confused about is how the timeline in the film is working. For example, we have a younger Morpheus who's being played by Yahya Abdul-Mateen, but a Neo and Trinity who are the same age. This trailer also gives us our first look at a person that I believe is Niobe. Though I'm not 100% on this, she is wearing clothes like she's in the real world, and according to rumours on the film, she will now be the leader of the human race. It seems like at the end of the third film that both Trinity and Neo's bodies were restored and their minds were placed back into the simulation. There were several things brought across from Neo's subconscious, and this is why we have elements like the black cat, the blue pills to keep him sedated, a coffee shop called Simulate, and several other aspects from the first movie. Now just in the same way that characters like the Architect, Sati, the Merovingian, and probably Agent Smith have been brought into this new simulation, I believe that Morpheus himself will be a machine. We've seen a moment in the trailers where it looks like the character is being created, and I think if we think about the timeline for the film, then that makes a lot of sense. My guess would be that Neo and Trinity were kept in the machine world and they were given special pods to live in, which meant that they aged a lot slower. Outside in the real world, though time continued as normal, Morpheus died, Niobe became the leader of humanity, and a rebellion started up that wanted to take the machines down. The Matrix itself may have been created to bend itself to Neo's subconscious, keeping him somewhat trapped and unaware of exactly what's going on. This may be why his reflection is altered, as seeing his own face may trigger a memory. The rules in the first film said that you appear how you want to appear in the Matrix, so perhaps the way he looks is a way to stop him from discovering the truth. It's clear that Trinity's memory has been wiped too, and I believe that all the pills, therapy, and so on have been put in place to keep Neo sedated. Bumping into Trinity could end up triggering a mass event in which their memories come back and thus they start off a chain of events that leads to them escaping. Now how they do this appears to be through Morpheus and also Bugs. Bugs is several moments in the trailer that look like they're repeating scenes from the first film, namely the one in which he's caught on a computer by police, much like how Trinity was. As for how they'll escape, it seems like mirrors play a big part too. In the first film, they were of course how Neo managed to exit the Matrix after taking the pill. Here, they are very much used as doorways, and in the first film, the phrase through the looking glass was used quite heavily. This pulled from Alice in Wonderland, which we saw in the first trailer was a book that Neo came across at one point. The idea of the Matrix surrounding all the characters is used to great effect, and I think it's brilliant how in the moment that Morpheus looks into a mirror, that we can see water droplets on it that resemble the code. There's also the dojo fight that is clearly mimicking the first movie, but it's a much more destructive sparring session this time around. Because of this, I almost feel like Neo will be very similar to people that Morpheus talked about in the first movie, and that he'll actually not want to leave the program. In the red dress scene, Morpheus discussed how there were people who would fight to keep things the way that they are because they have a good life, and looking at how rich and successful that Neo seems to be, I feel like he might fall into this category. It seems like Trinity and the idea of saving her will be what pulls him out of it, and that's why it's brought up so much in the teaser, but let me know below if you disagree. If we are really in his mind here, it seems like Neo has created a fake life for himself. Looks like he sedates himself with blue pills, which of course calls back to the first film, as it was in that that we saw these led someone away from escaping the Matrix. From what I can gather from the TV spots and trailers, Neo is a game developer that actually worked on a trilogy of games for Warner Brothers that was also called The Matrix. 
This is super fourth wall breaking and it's going to add so much meta stuff to the movie if that's the case. There's even a moment in which we see a scene from the Matrix playing in the movie itself, making my head explode trying to figure out what's going on. As I've said, I think his subconscious will be very much what this world is built around and that everything in it will pull from elements of his mind. I think by the looks of it that this movie will be tackling mental health themes and highlighting people who question their reality and if there is indeed some legitimacy to it. This is given further weight by the therapy session in which Neo spends time with the analyst played by Neil Patrick Harris. He'll be very much keeping Neo in check and referring to him as Anderson, which was the character's name before he was freed. I think the last thing they want to do is have Neo and Trinity wake up as they could possibly help the human rebellion that I'm guessing are still angry that we're being used as batteries. If the woman is indeed Niobe, then she's very much hinting to the war coming and possibly she doesn't want to disrupt the symbiosis that humanity has achieved with the machines. I'm guessing it all comes to a head at the coffee shop, which we can see is called Simulate. Simulate becomes Simulate if you remove the T, and coffee is of course something that wakes you up when you're tired. This could perhaps hint at how Neo will wake up, and it also has the green colour that's associated with the Matrix code. It seems like it's at this location that they both become aware, and whereas in the original trilogy only Neo had the one superpowers, it seems like Trinity has them here too. And actually love it if the twist was that it was Trinity who was the one who built everything and Neo was trying to keep things in place because he found somewhat of a paradise. There is a lot of focus on her in this trailer and it's clear that Morpheus wants to push Neo into saving her. I love how there's also the mention of how she didn't make it past a certain point and this is of course referencing how she died before making it to the Machine City Center. However, at least in this movie, they do make it past that point of the skyscraper together so it seems like they'll be going towards the final scene as a team. The bits from the movie within the movie are said to be from Neo's memories but Trinity would remember these moments too and she'd be able to see Neo which I think could be teasing towards it being in her head. Now when the first trailer dropped there was a big tease towards who Jonathan Groff was playing and I think it's become clear now that it will be Agent Smith. There is a scene in which you can catch the character with his mouth sticking together and I think it would be great if this was carried out by Neo. Smith of course did the same thing to Neo in the first Matrix film and it would be a great little switcheroo. Now we also get a much better look at the Menasine ship which is replacing the Nebuchadnezzar. This is actually named after the Greek goddess of memory which of course ties into the overall theme of the film. Now as for my thoughts on the movie, I know I should be really excited for it but I think No Way Home has just kind of sucked all the air out of the room. I really wish they'd released this at the start of December or even January as I think the same week as Spider-Man is really going to do it a disservice. The movie definitely deserves to be talked about and it's a shame seeing it overshadowed when we've had any other point in the air that they could have dropped it at but didn't. It's also of course dropping on HBO Max in the US on the same day as it releases in cinemas so I don't know how the box office is going to do but I'm definitely going to go see it on the big screen. Though the franchise has had its ups and downs, it's still changed the action genre and I love that they're leaning into as much fourth wall breaking stuff as possible as it's going to be such a head trip. I was one of those kids who saw the first movie and thought the Matrix was real so I can't wait to watch this then explain to my wife why I'm downing pills in a nightclub and running around after a fit bird with a rabbit tattoo. Anyway that's my problem and not yours but obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the new look. We are running a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of the Spider-Man 4K trilogies on the 30th of December and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the trailer. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of the first look at Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse which will be linked on screen right now. We go over all the cool little easter eggs in it and also how it hints towards other Spider-Men showing up so definitely go check it out right after this. If not then thanks for sitting through the video, you've been the best, I've been Paul, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, peace.